Now, there are a couple of other types of research. I'm going to go through them really quick. One of them is a literature review, a favorite of everyone. Does anyone know what a literature review is? You don't have to. If you've taken some psychology classes, you might. All right, so a literature review actually, believe it or not, is something you must also know in the world of IT, in information technology. Because when you are developing a product, you need to be able to know what's out there. What's the, what are the cutting edge technologies? How do other organizations and people actually accomplish various things on the technological side of a product? So what the design team needs to do is to actually go online, because most of it is done online these days, and find any literature. In other words, you may look at journal articles, or you may look at white papers, or you may look at blogs. You want to do a search to see what is out there. So you want to focus, of course, on the product or domain of the potential product that you are looking at. So here are some of the things that you're going to want to look at. Product marketing plans. A lot of people say, well, that's not really technological. Why do I have to look at it? Well, think back to the iPod, right? Their branding, their marketing is really critical to how well their product works. So you want to look at that and see what messages are going to be given to the potential customers and potential users because you need to make sure that you live up to those. And if you can't, you need to let them know. But it also gives you an idea of what is the organization or the company thinking about this particular product. Because at this point, you've already had your stakeholder interviews. right? But it's entirely possible that what they have conveyed to marketing is a little bit different from what they conveyed to you. So this can really give you some really important information. Brand strategy, same thing. Market research. Market research is another one of those things that I've got to tell you, I've looked at a lot of market research. It's boring. But it provides you with insight into the product domain as well as what you need for your product that you will not find in other places. And so what you want to do is see what market research is out there in terms of your domain. If you are creating a geospatial product, for example, what do we know about that domain? How large is it monetarily? How do most organizations make decisions on whether they're going to purchase something or not? That's going to be included in market research. Yes? So if we choose a website, uh, how do we go about finding stuff for all that? Unless you, it's like a huge website. Are you concerned about your group project? No. OK, for your group project? You're so lucky you don't have to do a literature review. Uh, Yay! Unless you want to. Maybe. Oh, you're so positive. Yeah, for you don't have to do a literature review for your, your project, because the literature reviews actually can be quite in intensive. Nice. When I've done literature review, it's taken me four months. Easily, by the way. Which was for a geospatial product, as a matter of fact, which is why it's so easy for me to talk about it in that respect. So market research. Boring, lots of information. Gives you lots of information on the business side. Of course, user surveys. See what's already out there. There may be user surveys that a third party company has already done of customers in that particular domain. Or it may be, if you work for a larger corporation, user surveys or user research that they have already done. You want to look at those. Now here's one that some of you may already be familiar with that is especially important when it comes to the technology side of things. Technology specifications and white papers. Have any of you read a white paper? Or do you know what a white paper is? Anyone? All right, if you go to, well, if you go to a lot of universities, but also if you go to places like Google and Microsoft, and Facebook, and a lot of these uh, large companies, even you know Dell and Oracle, they will have a section on research where they actually have what they call our white papers. 
What these white papers are, this is where they actually talk about their technology and what they've done with their technology, testing that they've done with their technology. So when they have tried to implement something in Google Maps, for example. So with Google Maps, when they were trying to get better precision on being able to pinpoint a specific address, they have actually a whole bunch of white papers on the various algorithms that they have used, the various technologies that they've used. They talk about those in the white papers. When you have companies that um, have databases, right, Oracle, Microsoft, for example, they will have white papers that talk about their database systems, about how they are so much better than this other database system. Look, we've done tests in this particular domain, and we found that our database, we found that SQL Server is much more efficient to use than Oracle. Those are the types of things that you want to look at. They will also talk about their research. You know, there's Microsoft Research. Oracle has their own, own research arm. They have the, is it the, the, the little car that drives itself. All right, they have a bunch of white papers on that. Microsoft has a ton of white papers that are actually quite useful because they have a very large research division. You want to be able to see what's being done and what's the cutting edge. They can be really, really helpful, really informative. You will probably focus the most on these. However, there is one thing you have to remember when you are dealing with white papers. That's very, very important. Anyone want to take a guess as to what that is, where you have to be careful? Bias. Bias. That's right. You need to worry about bias because if Microsoft or Google or any other company is putting out a white paper where they are talking about their technologies, especially if they are comparing their technologies to someone else's technologies, do you think they're going to say, well, you know, we tested this and we found that, you know, our Oracle database is not as good as this as SQL Server. I think you're going to find that on Oracle. Yeah, I've yet to find anything like that on Oracle or Microsoft or any of those. So you need to be aware of bias because they use this as a marketing tool. They can be very helpful and provide you knowledge about technology, but they can be biased. And I'm going to tell you there is no such thing as a company that is not biased. All right? I know Microsoft gets a lot of flack. We've been around a long time, but Microsoft was not the first to get flack. IBM really got a lot of flack at some point. Right? Pretty much every company has bias. So you have to remember that and be, be very cognizant of that when you are looking at these white papers. But still, it can be very helpful. Then there's also business and technical journal articles. Usually with those, you are going to really see what's at the cutting edge in terms of research. So those can also be very, very helpful depending on how much risk you want to have with your product. The closer something is to research and the further away it is from a production system, the higher the risk you are going to have in terms of taking that and putting it in a production system. It's not a simple, easy process. But it is still something you want to look at to give you an idea of what's out there. You also want to look at any competitive studies. That is basically where, and usually if you're working at a large corporation, they'll actually have some of these in-house, where you are looking at comparisons between products. What are the advantages of one product over another? All right, so you may actually have in-house competitive studies. You may actually do some yourself. Of course, web searches for related and competing products and news. This is especially important when you are talking about startups. Because with a startup, you can do a search and not find anything, and then next week, here's a new startup. There it is. They have a new technology, and they have not only, they're not only duplicating what you want, but they're ahead of you. So it's really important to make sure that you do a thorough web search. Of course, usability studies and metrics, customer support data, such as call center statistics. So if you look at a large, work at a larger corporation, they will have information on what do people call about and complain. Now with this, you also have to worry about bias, however. What do you think the possible bias is that you'd have to worry about with that? How many of you have ever called Microsoft and said, 
I just wanted to call and tell you how much I love your product and how awesome this feature is in Microsoft Word. <laughs> yeah, who does that? I don't know of anybody. I'm sure someone does at some point. But you have to remember that with this data, you're only going to be seeing the negative aspects of things, not the positive aspects. That's why you need to look more at usability studies. So then you take this information, you use it to formulate various questions as early as with your stakeholders or with your subject matter experts, but also with the users and user testing for further testing as well as the technologies that you are considering implementing. Make sense? Or was it too quick? <laughs>